Hello, friends. I'm Terry David Mulligan. This is Mulligan Stew, CKUA, the Mulligan Stew podcast and the Terry David Mulligan YouTube channel. We brought all three to bear because it's another festival season. And we have always done, if we can find each other, Doug Cox, the artistic director of the Vancouver Island Music Festival. You are Doug Cox, are you not? I think I am. Yes, sir. So, uh, first of all, are you well? Are you okay? Yeah, it's a, you know it's it's a busy time right now. Of course, we're just a couple of weeks out from the festival, so we are running like mad. Now, uh, as you, as we all know, and 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 what we should talk about is that COVID just crunched everybody: uh, musicians, uh, uh, stages, tours, festivals, everything. Have we recovered? How's what's the state of the festival business in your eyes? Well, I don't think we're ever going to go back to where we were before COVID. I think the world's actually changed. Yeah. And uh, a lot of that has to do with prices of things and also with uh, the quality of service that you get from from people. I mean, if you just look at the airlines as an example <laughs> of, of how things have changed. So I think we've gotten to the point where we've landed and we're kind of over the shock of what's happening. And now we're dealing with this new world. But um, it's got a huge effect on us because... Nothing's as it was, you know, and I don't think it's going to get back to where it was. Compound that with the fact that live music and the community festival scene or the folk festival scene, I think, outside of big municipalities is really changing. What about boomer performers? Do they have to be drag kicking and screaming on the road again? Well, a lot of them are gone. You know, yeah. I, I look back at our archives recently and, and it was astounding to me how many folks are gone. So... You know, when you book somebody who's, say, in their 80s, um, a lot can happen to their health over the period of about seven or eight months. Yep. Used to be if you were booking people in their 60s and even their early 70s, it wasn't it wasn't that risky. But um, as we all age, it's certainly getting a lot riskier and there just aren't as many of them. You know, now that being said, we we book a lot of young people, too. We have a lot of young performers at the festival. Um but my heart lies partly in the in the roots of and the traditions of of all the different styles of music, and I think that was a role that the folk festivals played in the past, as we presented those people that represented the roots and the tradition. And uh, it's getting harder and harder to to do that because they're disappearing very quickly now. So I'm really proud of this year's lineup because I think we did step back to uh, our original intent. Well, you know. Let's and, have let's have a look at the list and and and, and okay. we'll we'll talk our way through this. Doug Cox, artistic director of Vancouver Island Music Festival, July twelve through fourteen, right around the corner, friends. Friday, you start Friday with one of the great names in music ever, Bela Fleck, and, yeah. and but he's bringing some friends with him. Absolutely, it's it's Bela Fleck with Edgar Meyer and Zakir Hussein. So. Edgar Meyer is the finest upright bass player on the planet today, um, mostly known for his work with Jerry Douglas and Yo-Yo Ma. Um, and Zakir Hussein is probably the king of the Indian music world right now. He's the world's most famous tabla player. Um, in, in Indian music, he is royalty. So the fact that they're coming as a, as a quartet actually is, is uh, fantastic. And, uh, the music that they make together is it's one of those collaborations that is truly musical and really works. It, I'm excited it, about that. It'll be a jump on Friday night. Speaking of your young kids, uh, the milk carton kids are are on Friday as well. Absolutely. And they're they're for people that don't know them, they're kind of the darlings of the Americana scene. They played our festival a few years back. When Katie Lang played the festival, they were her opening act. Yeah. Now they're coming back and as as main stage people. Doug Cox, Artistic Director of Vancouver Island Music Festival, July 12th through 14. So Friday night, well done. Established and younger artists sharing the same stage. Saturday, Leo Kotke. He's better than he's ever been. You know, he, he takes gorgeous pieces of guitar music and he brings in all the new stuff that he knows about harmony. And, and I'm thrilled that he's still around playing for you. And Leo Kotke is opening for the great Lucinda Williams. Yeah, I'm thrilled that she's finally coming. We had her booked before the pandemic, the, the year we had to cancel. And uh, everything I've heard about her shows, you know, she had a stroke a couple of years ago sure. and has recovered. She doesn't play guitar anymore. 
but her voice is as good as it always has been. And I've heard she's very personable now and she tells more stories and yes. she's got a hot, hot band backing her up. So that'll be a good one. She's uh, she's guesting on the new uh, Colin James single that's just come out. Oh, nice. And she, well, nice. I think because Colin Linden is producing uh, and and writing some of the tunes and he's built a great relationship with Lucinda Williams. So yeah. uh, I think that's, that's good, good all the way around. And I'm really happy that she's found happiness like she seems happier these days yeah she does she certainly talks more on stage and tells more stories and all that kind of stuff and a new album and a new album yes brand new album that's that's pretty rocking as well you know she's she's one of the people i think that took uh sounds like the rolling stones and the, the faces yeah and mixed it up with with uh country music and every single record she puts out is, is its own kind of sonic adventure. And yeah. I really admire artists like that because uh, she doesn't just repeat the same thing over and over again. So your headliner on Saturday night, Lucinda Williams. Sunday, Sunday becomes something else again. Dan Lamois. Yeah, I've been I've been wanting to have him come play our festival for years. And I think this might be the first time he's played on Vancouver Island. And he's touring with a trio right now. And all the reviews of his shows have been fabulous. Um, he's kind of doing a career yeah. uh, perspective as well as a bunch of new stuff, too. If you just follow the trail of his history. You two, the Neville Brothers, Bob Dylan. Yeah. I mean, you name it. You know, of course, the Amy Lou Harris record that he did. Yeah, he's he's amazing and, and a huge, important figure in the history of Canadian folk music. Oh, he too. is that. Dan Lanois. And then, of course, uh, you finish off, I love this, the High Bar Gang. Yeah, it was Sherry Ulrich and Barney Bentall and Colin Nairn and all of those guys. Um, Canada's most important roots music people, too. I, I just, how do people uh, get tickets? People can get tickets at islandmusicfest.com. They can also um, see the schedule and they can see samples of all the different performers all off the website. There are still tickets. There's weekend passes available. There's day passes available. We're getting close to being um, sold out with our campground, really close actually. But there's lots of camping around around the festival, and I believe there's still lots of Airbnbs and stuff too. Thank you for doing this. Okay, thank you, Terry. He's Doug Cox. He's the uh, artistic director of the Vancouver Island Music Festival, July 12 through 14. Uh, go and check out the website and 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 pick your day. It's truly something you don't want to miss. It is my pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Terry David Mulligan, and it's my pleasure to introduce to Mulligan Stew and the podcast and the YouTube channel to the second annual, the festival roundup, whatever. Mulligan we, Stew. From Winnipeg, uh, we welcome back uh, Chris Freyer. I'm going to call you all artistic directors. You can correct me otherwise. And the Vancouver Folk Festival, Fiona Black. Hello, Fee. And in uh, Calgary, Kerry Clark. And then the last one is um, Canmore. Jenna Klein Waller from the land of three named people, much like myself. <laughs> all right, friends, let's have, I, I hope you're all well. Now, let's talk about uh, the condition of uh, touring bands, artistic, making a living, people leaving their homes to go and see festivals. What, uh, how, does, how does the lay of the land feel to you, Chris? Um, oh, it feels like it's improving every year since coming out of COVID. Um. And this year's line. I mean, this year we're 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 doing well with our with our ticket sales. Um, and we are we've you know last couple of years we had quite a few cancellations and supply chain issues and stuff like that. But things seem to be getting better. Um, but I was reading a, a report today about Europe, where um, there's about 60, 70 festivals in Western Europe that have canceled this summer, yeah. uh, just due to people not uh, going out. Uh, as much um, people learning how to 18 to 25 staying at home a lot um, just because of what they kind of learned during COVID how uh, how cheap it is to stay home <laughs> affordable it is to stay home um, so yeah I would say just in short like things are things are improving and I think that most of our festivals are pretty lucky um, to have a level of interest in the community let's so. find out okay for the audience I'm going to do this in order of when they open, so you, in your mindset, you can you can start to plan if you already haven't done so. So Winnipeg, July the 11th through 14, Chris Freyer, artistic director, is going to tell us about what's going on. First of all, one of the names I wrote down almost immediately was Ariel Posen. I'm, I'm thrilled to see that he's because he's so busy that he can come back and and, and play Winnipeg. 
Yeah, and he's also doing the, uh, he's a mentor in our Young Performers program this year as well. And he's also been in the program. So, um, yeah, so we're excited to have to have him back this year. Um, yeah, I, I mean, in terms of the, the lineup, I mean, we've got 70 plus artists, um, which is kind of on par with what we have, the nine daytime stages. Sorry, seven daytime stages, two evening stages um, that offer something completely different. I've been laughing. We have everything from Killer Mike to the Kingston Trio. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, wow. Uh, which is, yeah. So I've been trying to explain the Kingston Trio to like some of our younger. First of all, the first thing they say is, they're still alive? Yeah. And I'm like, no, no, they're not. And then I have to go into explaining what a legacy group is versus a cover group. Wow. And so I always reference the Blind Boys of Alabama, which are very a very good example sure. of a legacy group. Um, but yeah, you know, like uh, Mount Joy and Orville Peck and and uh, Noah Cyrus, Lucinda Williams, uh, the Cowboy Junkies, Sam Poli. Yes, exactly. Uh, Jim Cuddy's uh, um, son uh, is coming to the festival, so that'll be funny. Actually, kind of he, he totally gets the the workshops uh the collaboration stuff so he's actually gonna be hosting a bit so C cowboy junkies uh, with their 40th anniversary together yeah is that legacy what is it what, what have they yeah i mean we we try we actually try to do like a lot of um okay. we try to incorporate that for a sp right. specific segment of our population which is usually my age group <laughs> you know but you know who we haven't mentioned lucinda williams yeah well i did and lucinda is one of my favorites. We worked with her a lot. She's played the festival before, but she had her, of course, she had a stroke a couple of years ago. Um, and I was recently um, listening to her um, her audio book that's out that's like phenomenal. The Secrets Told You, or so, I can't remember the exact name right now, but um, it, it just reminded me of how cool and what an icon she is. And uh, yeah, how, what a trailblazer she is and how late in her career she became um acknowledged by the by the music community and won a grammy in her 40s and songwriter i mean she's yeah she's on the new um colin james album yeah oh out. yeah she's she's a gem so yeah looking forward to seeing this now uh i see maddie madeline roger who i absolutely love uh and the fretless yes. on the bill are they working together because they do yes so they're playing together okay. but in addition to that um Maddie did uh, Josh Kaufman from Bonnie Light Horseman uh, produced her new latest record, Nerve, which is a fantastic record. And so they'll be doing a workshop together, uh, collaborating together as well. So um, we're looking forward to that. And I actually didn't know that when I was putting it together and she 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 told me about it. And uh, so Maddie is going to be like an MVP this year. She's going to be doing a lot between the fretless and solo work Wonderful. and workshops Wonderful. and stuff. Yeah. By the way, another great local artist. Just a, a follow up. Uh, congratulations on the booking of Wyatt C. Lewis because I, like, I really like him a lot. I think yes. he, he has absolutely a lot of promise. And Walk and Wolf. I mean, there, there's so many possibilities. So, uh, yeah. what's your website? Oh, WinnipegFolkFestival.ca. Chris Freyer, the artistic director.